Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to flush or how to change or how to replace your coolant and your Toyota and Lexus. As you can see, this is Toyota. I'm going to show you in this video on Toyota and Lexus vehicles. Start with the Toyota. It's a little bit simpler. It's simpler in terms, you don't have plastic around the engine bay. It's all open. On Lexus, depending on the model, make and year, there's more plastic that you might have to remove. So, before you do any work, just uh, coolant flush or coolant replacement, word of advice, never use chemicals, never. Like I said, never use any chemical, any flush products, because you can't completely drain everything from the engine or, you know, usually especially from the engine. You can drain pretty much everything from the radiator, but not from the engine. Because the way the engine, you know, you can't really drain everything from even uh, your, uh, con not condenser, your heater core. Heater core, they're actually that, that one right there uh, on, on the inside. You can't really drain everything. And if you use those chemicals, it's still going to be in the system. Uh, best way to do it is to drain and fill. Uh, there, there might be an exception, you know what I mean? If you have a car that may be 20, maybe 30 years old, has been neglected, but you're gonna have other problems. Using chemicals to do the flush, you know, you're gonna have corrosion there on the inside, you're gonna have problems with their engine. So might as well, you know, start thinking about some other alternatives, maybe rebuilding the engine, maybe getting remanufactured, or, you know, it's just, at that point, dumping chem chemicals, not gonna improve much because you already have corrosion on the inside. And, and that's just, a, you know, one of the sad things that when it's neglected, it's neglected. If you do have to use, for some reason, you want to still do the flush, don't use the chemicals. If you want to remove as much as possible old coolant, which is, there is no really need, always use. Don't use the water from your garden hose or from your spigot or your house water because it's a either chlorinated or you have, if you have well, it has a lot of minerals. Those minerals will destroy the inside of your engine block. Aluminum, they will attack and will destroy the corrosion. Use distilled water. This stuff is cheap. Use it if you have to, or just avoid it, don't use it. Do I use, you know what I'm using this for? Is to, for my uh, battery maintenance. I don't use this to flush the systems. Best thing to do is to drain fill. Do it more often. If you're not sure if it's still good or not, you know, don't follow factor recommended. Cooling is cheap. You can use aftermarket cooling in your Toyota or Lexus, or you can use the factory. It's your call. I prefer using aftermarket. This is the factory. This is what I prefer. Why I prefer uh, aftermarket? You see this pinkish stuff when you remove the cap? Well, it, leave, it leaves uh, some, uh, it leaves, when it dries up, it leaves behind this pink, whatever that is, some kind of, I don't know what that is. And I don't like it. When I replace the water bubble on my Lexus, there is pinkish color discoloration. You know, kind of build up on a metal surface. This is what, what concerns me. That buildup will prevent the heat transfer. So that's why I'm I'm switching from Toyota, from Toyota Long Life Coolant. I'm going with Amsoil Long Life Coolant. Amsoil has different coolants. There's a lot of coolants aftermarket. Make sure you use compatible. You don't want to use Amsoil. It's your call, whatever you want to use. This is what I'm using. And if you want my recommendation, I recommend Amsoil. If you don't want my recommendation, use whatever you prefer. And one more thing that I do before, uh, once it's all done, I do add every year coolant booster to improve heat transfer, especially in the winter time. That's my concern because I don't like to idle car. I don't like to, you know, you're driving with the low temperatures. I like for my engine to warm up faster. And unfortunately, you know, on gas engines, they don't have same way as like an engine block here, like on diesel engines do that you can plug it in, warms up, and you're good to go. You know, on a big V8 engine like 5.7, 4.6, or 4.7, it takes a long time to warm up the engine. It literally, even in the summertime. You know, when I mean long time, it's not as quick as four cylinder or six cylinder, you know. Those engines are warm up much faster because they have less volume. On V8, it's almost double of what four or six cylinder has. So that's why it takes time. The way you do the coolant replacement on your Toyota, make sure it's cold. Always, always, always work when it's cold. You don't want to burn yourself. It does not, 
benefit you. It, it, it's the dumbest thing you can do working on a hot engine, no matter what you do, always when it's cold. Do not remove the cap. Why? I'm gonna explain to you. All keep it. What you wanna do? So right there is the valve. To get to that valve, you might have to remove stuff. You might be able to get it from the top uh, if you have a long arm, which is it's a difficult part. Usually you have to remove stuff from under either the plastic or the uh, depending on what you have. It might be plastic trim or might be just a uh, skid plate. You might have to remove the skid plate to get to that right there, that plastic valve to open up. And there is really no easy way. If you can do it from the top, do it from the top. If not, well, because you still have to put something underneath, it has to drain off. It's it's not difficult, but it just takes a little bit of time. That's what I wanna say. Remove that, let it start draining. But don't remove your radiator cap. You're probably gonna ask me why. Well, here is the thing. You have this expansion tank. For if you don't remove the radiator cap, it it with a by vacuum automatically will extract all the fluid from here through this hose. See this hose? It will automatically pull through this cap. If you remove the cap, it will not pull. Then you would have to extract yourself. It is more work. So that's why you know what I mean. That, that's how I, I do it. I will let it by vacuum pull everything out of here. Once I see there's nothing here, then I will remove the cap and let it, uh, you know, I would let coolant drain off. Once the coolant drain off, there is something else that I want to mention to you guys, uh, what Toyota vehicle or Toyota engines have. So one more thing that I want to mention while the fluid is still draining, Toyota engines have a valve well, if you want to call it that, on the side, on the both sides, if it's a V8, I know they have it on V6 too, maybe on four cylinders. I can't even show you because it's so far somewhere up there, it's very difficult to reach, to open up, so you can drain pretty much 90, 90%, maybe 99% of all the coolant from the cylinders, from the engine block. However, to reach to, 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 to that, it's, it's pretty much impossible unless, I don't know, unless the engine is removed or everything is removed around it i you know i can't even show you because i it's if you can't even see it so how are you going to be able to remove it get your hand there that's my point it's there on some i don't know if all of them i know the v8s have some i know six cylinder has them even four cylinders some have them but just to get to it sometimes it's impossible so that's why you just uh, remove the drain plug on the radiator and go from there so once the fluid is drained off, the cap is off already because we extracted from the expansion tank. You want to close this. You want to close the valve. You know, be careful. Don't use any tools because it's a plastic. You're going to break it. Make sure it's tight. Start pouring the coolant. Use a funnel. Make sure you use clean funnel. Don't use the same funnel used for gasoline or oil. If you do, wash it, wipe it. So there is no contamination. You don't want to contaminate your coolant. Once you add coolant slowly, because there's a lot of stuff it has to go, it has to get to EGR cooler if you have it, radiator, engine block, um, heater core, depending on which how you have minivan, you might it might have to go all the way in the back. So if you take your time slowly so it has enough time for it to get there and for the air to come out. Because the last thing you want to do is to have air trap. That's the worst thing you can do. I know a guy who had an issue he didn't uh, didn't do it properly or someone didn't do it for him he was driving the highway and the engine was overheating on the inside he was it was cold in the winter time he was getting zero heat on the inside engine was overheating and we had to and i was actually with him and we had to uh, actually in a separate car we had to pull over and bleed the air out of the system it someone did poorly job for him you know what i mean and he was overheating of course he sold the car that car became somebody else's uh, problem a nightmare after a while because you know once you overheat the engine you might not fail instantly but eventually head gasket will fail so you add the coolant you squeeze the hoses slowly upper hose lower hose if you can just to get the bubbles out you know you might some some might come out of here you might might not you know what i mean so you can get the, some of the bubbles out once you fill it up close it once it's closed what you want to do next step start your car and idle car for you know maybe a minute then 
rev up the engine to 2000 rpm why so you can warm up the engine faster and get the thermistor open you can actually yeah you can reach there and touch the hose when the engine is running when it gets hot enough this hose will be hot that one will be cold that's why the toyota says you know what i mean run it at 2000 rpm so the engine warms up fast enough and it opens up the thermostat so the fluids start going through the radiator and circulating getting any any pushing out the uh, air and uh, and allowing the coolant to replace the air pockets once the thermostat opens up the hose from being cold will get warm it won't get hot because you need extremely hot uh it has to be really really hot on outside for it to be hot and same thing or you know driving hard especially if it's colder outside once you fill it up you close the radiator make sure you have about three you add some fluid to the expansion thing three quarter why because when the engine cools off and if there is any empty space or the air comes out it's gonna pull from the expansion tank it's gonna pull by vacuum automatically and fill up your radiator fill up your system always replace the cap something i want to mention to you always replace your radiator cap if it's over seven years old or over a hundred thousand miles replace it they're not very expensive use oem unless you can use aftermarket if you know the, the quality you know what i mean i can comment never tried aftermarket so i always use oem i go you know it's one of those things that i prefer oem uh nothing wrong with using aftermarket you know you know this is probably denzo makes it so if you can find the same company that makes aftermarket or some other aftermarket brands good brands there is aftermarket good brands you can use them it's just you know personal preference and so and then once engine warms up cools off you check the coolant there make sure between low and high and something else that i want to mention you can have bubbles for three four days you can hear the bubble circulating you know trying this system trying to get the air out which is normal uh something else that you want to do while the engine is running while still kind of warm not hot you know squeeze the hose see if you can get more bubbles out of the system you know what i mean so get out of it uh and that's pretty much it on toyota how you do the coolant flush on a lexus vehicle you have more plastic around the engine bay remove the plastic so you can get to the so you can get to the uh, radio cap same steps as toyota no different you're not gonna get to your uh valve to drain the radiator from the top even if you remove this stuff here i tried you know you can't get there just not enough room what you want to do go underneath there is a plastic uh, shield or plastic uh, trim remove that so you can open up the valve and drain the fluid same process you know i already did on this car you can see it's not pinkish i'm using the yellowish goldish color whatever you want to call it on my lexus and uh and that's it you know what i mean that's how you do the flush and like i said never use chemicals see here this is the radiator that's a bottom hose here and you know what i mean that hose got hot when it got really hot thermostat stop open up coolant stop flowing i can feel this warm and then it got cold again because you know it a cold coolant got cooled off and thermostat got closed and coolant got to the point where it's cooler because it's circulated through the radiator so that's how you do it um it's the same process not much of a difference the euro lexus so uh, thank you thank you for watching commenting and uh, don't forget to share this video with others